All right, so in this section, we're talking about absolute value. Absolute value, might remember those two straight lines around a number. Like if we say, what is the absolute value of six? That means how far is six from zero? The absolute value of six is six. If you say, what's the absolute value of negative six? It is also six. So it is always the, uh, the positive of it. Now we can also say the absolute value of zero and zero is neither positive or negative. So that's the, the exception to that rule. So absolute value we can say is either zero or larger. It's never negative. Um, so in, in general, we drop the absolute value signs and just write the number in its, in its regular form without the negative or positive, just the distance from zero. Um, here's the first rule we see in our handout is the absolute value of any number a equals b when we have an equation set up like this, either a equals b or a could be negative b. And it's really just saying this sort of thing. Um, for example, if I wrote the absolute value of x equals 6, that's what we've just seen in action here. The absolute value of what number equals 6? So there's a positive answer to that x is 6, and there's a negative answer. And if you think about it, both of those work to solve this equation. The absolute value of positive 6 is 6. That works. And if we plug in negative 6, the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So in this section, you're going to see for most of our problems, you have the two answers, the positive and the negative answer. So if I said the absolute value of x equals 7, you'd say, well, x could be 7 or x could be negative 7. So two solutions. Now, what if I said the absolute value of x equals negative 7? So there's something wrong with that, with that picture there. We can't have the absolute value of a number that equals a negative. So we won't be able to work that sort of problem. That's going to be a no solution or a special case, uh, kind of a, a trick question there because there's no answer to that. So we have to have the absolute value equals a positive number. And then there's two possibilities that could have made that happen, either the positive or the negative case. All right, so most of the time your problems, as you know, in, in this algebra uh, class, aren't quite as simple as just saying the absolute value of x equals seven. We'll have more to it, like the absolute value of x plus three equals seven. So we have a little bit of work to do on that. Um, maybe you can figure that out just off the top of your head and think, what could I plug in for x that makes this true? You might think about four. Four plus three would be seven. The absolute value of seven is seven. So that is true, but what's the other answer? Can you figure that out without equation solving? And again, you may do that, but really what you're asking yourself is what makes the stuff in here equal seven, and that was the answer of four. But you're also trying to figure out what would make the stuff in here equal negative seven. So what would make x plus three equal negative seven? And to solve that, that would be negative 10. So negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7, then the absolute value of that is positive 7. So basically, the procedure for most everything in this whole section, actually, is you take, as long as this is a positive number and you've got an absolute value problem, if you've got an absolute value isolated like we've seen in these examples, equal to a positive number, it makes two cases. You set it equal to the positive of that, and you set it equal to the negative of that, and you get two solutions. You can check it, see that it's so. All right, let's try that again. So I'll ask you to do this. Uh, do x plus seven equals uh, 14, for example. Find the two answers for that. All right, so there's two possibilities. x plus seven, what makes that equal 14? And what makes x plus seven equal negative 14? So we solve that and get the two solutions of seven and negative 21. Again, check those out. Both of those make the original problem true. All right, here's another one for you. Try this one. So you wanna say what makes three X minus five equal 16, as well as what makes three X minus five equal negative 16. So this is going to require a little more algebra, but not super bad. So we can solve through that and get x is 7. So you'll notice that works. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 5 makes that be 16 as we work this to be. 
the absolute value 16 is 16. So one answer. Then over here for the negative 16, oh, it's a fraction. Those are a little harder to check, but uh, we have those calculators. Put that in your calculator. Three times negative 11 thirds minus five should be negative 16, whose absolute value is 16. So it should also work. So two solutions. Now, what if it's not isolated, like this example? So before we break into our two possibilities, we want to isolate our absolute value sign. So you see these absolutes around this? We want to get that alone or isolated on one side. So bring the four across the line before breaking out into your two problems. It's still an absolute value sign. Seven minus four is three. And now, proceed like we were. Write it as x plus 3 is 3, and also what makes x plus 3 equal negative 3. And then solving those two problems, if x is 0, and then here, be negative 6. Again, always check them. 0 plus 3 is 3. The absolute value is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. Plug in a negative 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. The absolute value is positive 3. 3 plus 4 is 7, so it works. All right, how about if I had absolute value of x plus 2 minus 7 equals negative 1? Okay, let me uh, feel free to always pause the video and try that on your own. I encourage you to do that. So on this one, um, you might, it might look like one of the special cases where there's not going to be a solution because of a negative number over here. We can't have absolute equal to a negative. But once we isolate by moving the 7 across, then it is um, a reasonable problem. So again, isolate first. If you have anything hanging around outside the absolute value sign, like a plus or a minus, or even a multiplier in front, get rid of everything around that by taking it to the other side by our algebra rules. Isolate this first. Then, if this is a positive number, you will have two problems. Equals the positive of that, equals the negative of that. And then that is x is 4, and that will be x is negative 8. Two solutions. Now, if you isolate it and this number is still negative, then there's no solution. Then we cannot work that. It's a special case. All right. Next up, what if you have an absolute value equal to another absolute? So, at the bottom of the page of your handout, we can see that that would be so. The absolute value of anything is equal to the absolute value of that same thing. Like, if they were the same numbers, you could just say, well, what makes these two quantities the same? Well, it's also true if they're opposites of each other. So, we'll use that idea to do the next section of, um, of ideas, next concept here. On the next page, if we had an absolute value, like an algebra problem to solve, like so, we could figure out what makes that work. Now, really, you could figure out what makes all these work if you just think about it for a while and try to figure out what works. But for most of the time, we have a procedure. Really, in Chapter 1, most everything we do, we have a procedure for solving and some tips um, step by step. When we get into Chapter 2 next, it's going to be more conceptual. So it's not just do this like a recipe. But for most of the things we see on Chapter 1, we have a recipe, like for solving quadratic equations. You can use that quadratic formula, step one, step two. So it's kind of nice to have steps in a procedure. Um, but some of the procedures have been very long in this section, in this chapter. In this whole chapter one, we'll notice we've solved so many types of equations and, and also the reading problem um, applications. And some of the problems are just long and tedious. So um, the good news is we're leaving kind of that procedure-wise type of thing out of chapter one. When we move into chapter two, it'll be more conceptual, so it won't take up your whole page of paper, but it'll be more kind of thought-provoking, where you'll have to think about, like, why would I do this? And uh, instead of just, I can't just say, just do this. I can give you hints on what the concept is and uh, why it's so, but it's more of a thought. Every problem's kind of unique to think about. So I think you'll like that better. I think it gets easier in Chapter 2. I hope you'll think that's true. But what I'm telling you for, for this, again, one more type of procedure. We've learned so many procedures, I know, um, so far in our journey. But this, too, has a Step 1, Step 2. So um, the Case 1 
to solve an absolute value problem equals an absolute value is the case of what would make these two quantities be equal. So what makes this quantity the same as that quantity? What would make them the same value? We can solve that, see if there's an X answer for that. The other possibility, the case two would be what would make this and this opposites of each other. Like maybe this is positive seven, that's negative seven, or any other number. I don't know what number it would be, but say they would be opposite in sign, but the same value. So to write that, we say what makes one side equal the negative of the other side. And do you know you could actually put the negative on this side or that side, just not both, because that, that wouldn't make them opposites, but times one side through by a negative would be the case for what makes them negatives of each other. All right, so we can solve these by gathering our numbers to one side and our variables to the other. Makes 2x is 7, dividing by 2. So if x is 7 over 2, these two would be the same quantity. That's one of our solutions. Then we want to do the opposites of each other case. So we bring the x's together, bring the constants together. And then dividing by four on both sides, x would be three-fourths. And we can check that out. So this answer, this answer, and that is um, the, the two, only two solutions uh, from this procedure, we find the two possibilities. All right, so I'll give you one to try. All right, so try the two, try to find the two solutions. So case one, what would make these two sides equivalent? These two the same value? And then case two, what would make them opposites? So a negative just on one side of it, opposites and sign. So we bring the x's to the same side and our constants to the other side and we find that negative three. Again, you can check that and see that it's so. If we plug in negative three for both of these x's, it's gonna be a true statement. That's what we're trying to do when we solve equations, what solves it. Over here, distributing the negative sign, then bringing our x's together, bringing our constants together, and that comes out to be negative one. And we can have confidence those are the two and only two things that would solve this possible solutions to this equation. And again, you might just, in, in solving equations, kind of in wrapping up chapter one, all of these equations, you might just come across the answer. There's different ways to find the answer. You can find them by kind of guessing and checking, just trying to, to um, put in numbers and see what works or uh, our graphing calculators can sometimes help us. We could graph these and see where they cross the x-axis. That's another method for solving um, equations. But, but generally, throughout the chapter, we've had a procedure, a more algebraic procedure, kind of the standard things that we teach in algebra classes, things to know that give you the basis of doing your algebra. And once you get those straight, you can really do any type of, any type of algebra building thing. You'll have the core um, procedures that we know. You have all the algebra secrets to do that. Okay, let's do one more before we um, close up this uh, session and then we'll come back in for the inequalities, the absolute value inequalities. So I'll ask you to do one more. Now, as always, active learning is better. You just seem to get it better in your mind if you'll follow along and do this at home as well. So always pause the video, try it on your own, then come back in and see if your answer is correct. So again, two cases. Uh, the case where they're the same, this equals this. Is there a value that makes these two quantities the same? And so that's 3x equals negative 7. So one solution should be negative 7 thirds. The other side, you distribute a negative sign through either side. I've been doing the right side, but you really could do either side. And maybe we should do that just to uh, show you that it really does come out the same. It's kind of amazing, maybe, that that does work so. But that gives us 7x equals negative 1. So check your work on that. 
and that would be your two answers. So we'll come back in on the next video and we'll finish up section 1.8 just a bit.